Welcome back to the Alts Podcast. I'm your host, Horatio Ruiz. We bring you industry leaders and creators to give their insights on the rapidly changing and exciting world of alternative assets. Opinions expressed on this podcast by the host and podcast guests are for informational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice. Podcast hosts and guests may maintain positions in the offerings discussed in this podcast. The intro song, Fishing for Pets, is written and composed by Alan Goldscher from his latest release, Live at the Lakeview Lounge. Thank you for joining the podcast. Today's guest is Max Album from Block Bar. Block Bar is a direct-to-consumer NFT marketplace for wine and spirits. The company has partnered with some of the most recognizable wine, whiskey, and tequila luxury brands to tie NFTs with physical bottles. Max explains why NFTs and the blockchain solve a problem in the wine and spirits industry and how NFTs can draw both consumers and brands closer together. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Max. All right, guys, thank you for coming on the podcast today. We have uh, our guest today, Max Album. He's the the head of product at Block Bar. Uh, Max, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Really excited for the conversation today. Yeah, we've had uh, a bunch of conversations with different uh, companies in the in the wines and spirits space, um, you know, that are fractionalizing or that are, you know, using blockchain in one way or the other. But you guys are actually the first direct to consumer uh, marketplace, right, uh, using NFTs for wines and spirits. And so um, I was wondering if you could just introduce us to Block Bar, you know, um, how your marketplace works and and take it from there. Yeah, totally. Well, again, thank you for the time. I'm really excited to dive into Block Bar, why we started Block Bar and the value that we're bringing to our owners. Um, for some context on Block Bar, like you said, we're the world's first direct-to-consumer wine and spirit marketplace um, for NFTs. And we partner directly with the brands, which I think is an important context that we'll jump a little bit deeper into later uh, to launch these NFTs. Each NFT on Black Bar represents a physical item within our storage facility in Singapore. And when you own that NFT, you can collect it, trade it, sell it, or eventually redeem the physical product in exchange for the NFT. Um, the reason that we started Black Bar was our two co-founders have generations of experience in the wine and spirit space. And the two biggest problems for them have been counterfeiting one. So proof of authenticity when either buying or, or reselling a luxury wine and spirit. And two, it's the custodianship. So actually owning a physical product and the problems that come with that. So Black Bar, again, partners directly with the brands to ensure that when you buy the NFT, and as it's sold along its life cycle down the line, say 10, 20, 50 times over the next 10 years, you can track exactly where it came from. And you know that that product is authentic and not counterfeit. And secondly, along that life cycle of that product ownership, as it's changing hands, instead of dealing with the insurance problems, proper storage conditions, I've heard you know, nightmare stories about opening bottles, um, yeah. you don't have to worry about any bottles being damaged over, over that lifetime. Um, to date, we're working on, you know, with our 12th brand partner and coming on to our uh, 18th brand, uh, brand launch on Black Bar. So it's been really exciting to be kind of this bridge between the physical and digital worlds for these luxury brands. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think I'm going to give you a slam dunk for explaining, uh, <laughs> you know, the advantages of of having, uh, you know, an, an NFT marketplace using the blockchain, right, to to keep track of your product and and for selling it as well. Um, one one thing I I wonder, and I'm always kind of a little bit surprised i guess i shouldn't be yeah is, is counterfeit right like how prevalent is that like you would think that you know to, to counterfeit a bottle of, of expensive whiskey or wine would be very difficult but uh, you know I, I could you take me through that yeah totally i mean just for context that the the counterfeiting is an industry within itself um mm -hmm. specifically again within this investment grade it's almost impossible to know if a bottle is authentic without actually opening the bottle, which obviously devalues it pretty greatly. Um, so within within this counterfeiting space, you not only have the, the issue from the investment side, but also when drinking, uh, extremely dangerous to be drinking anything that's counterfeit, specifically liquor. So a massive industry uh, within itself. And one of my favorite stories about Black Bar is on our third or fourth release, it was our release with Royal Salute. I was able to have a conversation with the owner who actually purchased the bottle. and. I always like to ask how you found Block Bar 
and why you decide to buy it in the NFT version versus the physical version. Uh, after the conversation, he let me know, you know, he found Blockbar through our social channels, word of mouth, pretty standard marketing stuff. And the reason he bought the bottle was that he recently bought a $10,000 bottle of McAllen from uh, someone who was a private seller that ended up being completely counterfeit. Uh, secondly, he also bought a second bottle. This one was from more of a direct channel. They dropped it in, in uh, facilitating the shipping and the bottle was completely worthless out of that. He got his money back with the insurance, but still obviously that wasn't the end goal of the product. So, you know, the, uh, the counterfeiting is a massive industry with itself. I think anyone who has experience in luxury wine and spirit purchasing probably has some sort of nightmare story. Um, mm -hmm. And we're trying to make sure that that, that doesn't happen. Um, so you have a marketplace, right? And so somebody can go in and, and buy, buy the NFT, which represents the physical bottle. And you mentioned that that was stored in Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, could you take me a little bit more through, through block bar as a platform? Do you guys also have like a, like a membership of some sort, or can anybody just connect directly to the site and just buy any bottle um, that they want? Yeah, I think part of our value here at Black Bar is that we're democratizing this asset class that is typically not available to most people. Uh, I know I can't walk into Christie's or Sotheby's or any of these auction houses and just make a bid on you know one of these luxury bottles. And so we're opening up access to what we hope is as many people as possible to make a really sound investment or have the opportunity to drink some of the best wine and spirits you know in the world. Um, so on the platform, you can sign up either using an Ethereum wallet for more of our NFT consumers, or for more of our traditional consumers, we, you can sign up with just your email or Google sign in. Um, from there on Blockbar, you have the ability to purchase with credit card, wire transfer, or using Ethereum on a digital wallet. Uh, on top of that, like I said, we want to try to make things as simple and easy as possible. So if you have your own digital wallet, you obviously have the opportunity to connect that and store your NFTs there. But if this is something more new to you, Blockbar can manage your, your wallet for you. So you have your account on Blockbar and it's it's almost like a typical e-commerce website. Wow. Um, and people can also kind of track it themselves, track the NFT themselves through that. Yep. You know, through that, you know. Exactly. Store, yeah. yeah, it's it's really intuitive. We try to, one, keep things simple, but also keep everybody informed on what's going on within our marketplace. Um, you can see what's been trading, recent activity, and, you know, some recent sale prices, which is always exciting. Awesome. Um, and we're, we're going to dig into some of the uh, the products you guys have yeah. on the platform. Uh, my, another question I had was, so let's say I, I, I want to you know, you can buy the, the wines or, or the spirits for, for investment. You can buy it for mm -hmm. con personal consumption. If I decide to have um, the bottle shipped to me, right? Um, yep. What happens to the NFT? Can I keep that as a commemorative kind of thing or does it get burned? Um, you know, what so happens the, with the NFT? Yeah, so the NFT is burned when, you, when you're accepted for redemption and we send you the physical bottle. The second that it arrives and you confirms that it arrives, the, the NFT is then burned. And the reason we do that is just to, again, keep things as simple as possible and make sure that nobody is in, in sense counterfeiting our NFTs. So if an NFT is redeemed already, um, you can't sell that again down the line to someone who thinks they have the opportunity to then redeem on block bar. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay. So one of the uh, things that caught my eye when I first visited the, yeah. the, the site was the collaboration you had between uh, Monkey Shoulder Whiskey uh, scotch and uh, yeah. and the board ape yacht club um and i i think i read somewhere that uh the board ape is actually owned by block bar mm -hmm. um, exactly. and i'm wondering how how you know how that came to be were, were, were the co-founders or uh you know board ape fans that they were holding it for a long time or did they see an opportunity here to be able to market their their ape I, it was a mixture of both i think first and foremost we saw an opportunity to make an investment um we invested in this ape specifically because we knew we'd have the IP rights to either just use it within Black Bar's channel or through other channels. Um, but where we saw the biggest opportunity, obviously, what comes to mind when you think of ape, monkey, monkey shoulder, it just was a, a pretty simple collaboration. I have to give a huge shout out to their team as well. Um, they they were super fast on moving on this and. It was really great that we we got to go to market so fast, and it became it's become this this collectible. It's the first you know Ford Ape whiskey for not only people who are just Ford Ape super fans, but anyone to redeem a physical product that represents their community. Yeah, and, and I saw that there was also like a, an opportunity for certain ape holders 
to um, also like brand their ape onto the whiskey? Or was that, could you talk a little bit about that? Cause that's, that's so cool. You know, that's like yeah. everybody's kind of, uh, you know, not dream, but like almost like something that they aspire to is to have their NFT, you know, that they own, that they're proud of to be, you know, shown off on this kind of luxury product. I think that's a big deal. Yeah, totally. I think, you know, representing your digital world on a physical item is something that's going to continue to grow over time. And we thought this was a cool opportunity to get even more people within the board ape and NFT community involved. So we had a ballot where 10 owners of a board ape could enter and buy a run of their own board ape on 100 monkey shoulder bottles. Um, so the, we were going to produce these physical items they can sell. People have already been gifting them within the platform. Um, again, just super exciting moment to be able to show, you know, the bridge between this physical and digital world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess leading into other things, I like guess kind of, uh, uh, other things. I know you guys are, are focused on, on wines and spirits. Mm-hmm. Uh, any, any chance that you see, you know, you talk about luxury goods, right? And yeah. I, I know I've heard, um, you guys talk a little bit about that and maybe another podcast about, you know, the prominence of luxury goods and, and being able to kind of store them safely somewhere, um, not have to worry about, you know, you yourself having to store them somewhere. And, and that's one advantage of the NFT. Um, and I, and I wonder if it, it's crossed your, your mind right now, or at some point in the future, I should say, you know, getting into other luxury items, whatever. Yeah, those may be. totally. I think the, the use case for NFTs and the blockchain specifically is, is super fast and it's super exciting to think about all the different use cases that are out there. Um, the reason, like I said, we started Black Bar was to solve two massive problems within the wine and spirit space. And as I also mentioned, our co-founders do come from that industry, which is why for now we're, we are sticking with wine and spirits. Um, you never know where that goes down the line, but I think there's some really interesting use cases. Um, I, I met some guys who are doing this with real estate as well. I think deeds have been experimented, which I think are, are a unique opportunity. Um, on top of my favorite example is con- concert tickets. Um, you know, I have been scammed out of concert tickets multiple times with counterfeiting and with an NFT in the blockchain, you can really trace back to where you're actually getting that item, no matter how many times it's resold, similar to how, how we're using the platform. So I think, like I said, there's, there's so much that could be done. I'm excited to see what people do with the space. I always, when people talk to me about it, my advice is always make sure first you're solving a problem. You're not creating a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Um, yeah. But after that, it becomes you know a simple, which people I think overlook how simple this is, um, way to solve a lot of problems of ownership over over time. Uh, so you brought in. I'm just curious, man, because you know my, my, when you bring yeah. in other examples, uh, concert tickets, you know, so that's that's you know you're right. Like you, you're trying to buy from somebody a third party, kind of you know yeah. you have that trust that it's 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 the real thing. I mean. And to be stuck with a ticket that's that's worthless, right, is pretty pretty heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, it's ruined my days, my day a couple of times for sure. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm you know, and I'm, I'm imagining the same thing when, like you explained before, when when somebody's, you know, they're looking forward to a nice bottle of wine or or whiskey, and, you know, and and, and it arriving and sharing it or just drinking it by yourself, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. um, it just hurts, man, like to be duped like that, you know. So yeah, um, yeah, the NFT would definitely that that helps solve a lot of it. Exactly. And again, we, we think this can be applied to so many different industries, but it was, it was such a prominent issue within, within wine and spirits, which is why we, we attack this. Yeah. Um, you know, you, we, you talked about the luxury goods and you guys definitely are involved with a bunch of different brands. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing that caught my attention was you sold, there were 211 bottles of the Karizawa, uh, the last masterpiece, mm-hmm. um, which was, uh, you know, I guess a 50 year old bottle of whiskey. Um, and it's the, the last one from 1970. I don't know the specifics of it, uh, yeah. but it was, it was sold. I think, I think I, I did the, the, uh, the conversion. It was like $85,000. I know it's sold for 50 something ETH. Um, it brought my question up, you know, could you talk about that bottle, how you're sourcing stuff like this? Cause this is, this is high end stuff, right? This is something that's yeah. highly sought after. Um, you're able to get a bottle of that. How do you, what, you know, what are your partnerships like and how are you able to get this stuff on your platform? Yeah, so like I, I mentioned, our our co-founders come from the duty-free industry, so they have direct relationships with a lot of these brands, specifically the parent brands that have ownership over the, the individual liquor brands. Um, and when we work with brands, we try to have cut, we try to cross off three boxes. 
with each launch to make sure that it is an exclusive experience for the buyer in one way or another. So the first is just the liquid, um, making sure that it's something that you know you can't get anywhere else in the world. And then if you can, if it, it, it must come with something that identifies itself. For instance, we have a launch right now with Patron where out of all the 299 bottles produced, we have numbers one through 15 being sold on Block Bar this Sunday. Uh, and those one through 15 actually have a special gold cap to differentiate itself. And then the third piece, if those two buckets cannot be crossed is an experience, which is always really exciting with these brands, um, specifically with the history and what they're able to offer to these owners, uh, which I think is a massive value add to what we're bringing to a lot of purchasing. Uh, typically when you are buying a luxury good, you buy it, you could be part of their newsletter going forward, but there aren't much many benefits after the actual purchase. And this is more of a relationship with the brand where you have an opportunity to kind of meet the team, understand, you know, they can understand why you purchased this item, this brand, whether it's for the brand itself, the, the liquid inside of it, or the experience. Um, and at the end of the day, it's a continued package that you get to uh, cash in on. Max, do you mind uh, like going into a little more detail on that? Like, uh, mm -hmm. are there certain like experiences or, or partnerships that you've been able to develop with the brands uh, to give the NFTs a little bit more utility? Yeah, totally. So yeah. a couple of, like I said, to, for all of our releases, we try to have one of those three buckets. Um, and typically the experience has to do on more of like the wine and spirit side of things than the NFT side of things. Yeah. But we do have both. So for instance, our release with Johnny Walker with the 35 year old Masters of Flavor, uh, that came with an NFT artwork that was developed by Boss Logic, who is a massive artist in the digital space. Um, so that was a huge benefit for those owners that added you know, value post actually even drinking the bottle if they decide to drink it. Um, and then we have experiences like visiting the distilleries. Uh, the owners of our Hennessy 8 bottle, which was our first uh, Hennessy bottle released on Block Bar and our first cognac, uh, they're able to actually visit the vineyard out in Cognac, meet with the Hennessy team. They're going to be hosted with a super VIP experience, um, which is really awesome. And similarly, our our drop next week, which is going to be with Remy Martin, it comes with an exclusive VIP trip that includes flights, dinners with the team out there, um, an opportunity to tour their facilities and just learn more and be part of the brand. That That's awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's it's really great. It, it, it totally like makes it more than just you know a transaction. I mean, it, you're you're really you know the, the experience, and that and really that's how we uh, you know if you coming up the last couple of years, experiences have become so much more valuable than the actual items themselves. You know, right, um, right. And I think it's interesting from the brand standpoint as well. As consumers are evolving and changing, this is also an opportunity for them to meet and understand the clients mm -hmm. that they're selling to. Like I said, when you're typically buying a luxury item, um, you don't really have much contact after the point of sale. So this is a great opportunity for both sides to learn more about each other, understand what a consumer is looking for and what the brands yeah. can be looking uh, for. Uh, you, you mentioned that you're going to have a release uh, with Patron and there's 299 bottles. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that you guys are as a, as a platform are kind of bullish on, on tequila, um, you know, and I'm wondering... Yeah. Uh, if you could talk about that, why do you see tequila as an emerging uh, market? Um, do you see that it's, you know, in, in higher demand? And maybe, again, me and my, I plead my ignorance, you know, I don't hear so much about like a uh, luxury tequila, right? Or high-end tequila. It's mostly yeah. to whiskey and wine. Right. But uh, I want to learn more about that. Yeah, totally. So our next partnership, it's again with Patron. It's our second release with Patron. It's and leak. Uh, Series three, which is their third version of this bottle. Um, we're super excited about it for the launch on July 24th. There's gonna be 15 bottles released exclusively on Block Bar with those exclusive gold bottle caps. Um, and the remaining of those 299 are gonna be sold on private channels. So this is really an opportunity for the public to get involved, which again is one of our big value points. Um, but I think the tequila market, again, I, Nothing on financial advice for me, but I definitely think it's the most interesting and growing specifically because of the younger generation and their interest in tequila. Um, I think for the most part, when you go to you know a bar or a party these days, 90% of the younger generation is drinking tequila. Um, and as that generation is becoming the buying class, I think this has become a huge investment opportunity for these tequila brands, uh, experimenting with different tequilas that are more of like the investment grade 
similar to a whiskey or, or a wine. You know, I, I'm looking it up and I, I thought I had uh, in the news heard about um, LeBron James. Uh, the Lobos. The, yeah, LeBron James and Michael Jordan has his own tequila brand now. I'm yeah. looking that up right now. It's um, really become so, this, yeah. this pop culture. Uh, I wouldn't even call it phenomenon. I'm a, I'm a big tequila drinker. Yeah. I keep it a little more standard than than the Patron and League Series 3, but I'm a big Patron drinker. Most of the people around me are as well. And it's it's just be kind of become this drink of our generation. And what's cool is that while it doesn't appreciate the way a whiskey or a wine does over time where the liquid actually increases its its value, its exclusivity does because so little there's so little opportunities to purchase these super premium tequilas. Um, as people begin to, you know, drink them even further down the line, it becomes even even more exclusive and even less on the market, which I think is the biggest opportunity for a tequila investor, if that's what you're looking to do. Yeah. And I think there's an important point I should have brought up earlier. Um, you know, with those 15 uh, bottles that you're, that you're going to have in the marketplace, how can people get them? I mean, is there a fixed price? Are they going to be auctioned off? Uh, and yeah. how generally do you do these these things with your other drops? Yeah. So we, we have a couple of different types of releases on block bar the karazawa last week was an auction so that that was a six-day auction where people could bid at incremental prices in order to bid you either have to have the digital funds in your wallet so enough ethereum to actually purchase it or you have to be pre-approved in our system by just submitting proof of those funds um, the second is a lottery system which is not so typical on block bar that's more so when there's one to two bottles people can join our lobby on the day of the drop shoveled in a random order, and then you can check out within that order of that uh, as, as you're listed. Um, and then the third is just first come, first serve, like we're doing with Patron on Sunday. So at 6 p.m. EST on National Tequila Day, uh, all users will have the opportunity to join the lobby, be kind of the first to click in like it's a typical e-commerce checkout, um, and then they'll have 10 minutes to check out. Uh, I will say the only thing that is different about this drop relative to a normal first come, first serve is that for two things. One, if you aren't a Patron owner from our previous release of the Chairman's Reserve, it's going to be $7,500. Um, but if you are an owner of the Patron Chairman's Reserve, you do receive an automated 5% discount on the checkout as we're trying to build this Patron community. And on top of that, Patron owners also have the opportunity to purchase early access, which we've seen a lot of action on, which is great. So, so if you're a previous owner, uh, if you're an owner of the previous drop, you can actually get uh, early access to this drop on Sunday. Exactly. Okay. So if you are an owner of the Patron Chairman's Reserve, which was our first release with Patron, you have early access throughout this whole week to purchase the bottle without having to deal with the hecticness of, of the drop. 15 bottles. Correct. So, the, you know, yeah. So you better get in early, I think. Um Wow. Okay. So I, I was going to ask you about that price point as well. Like what does a, what does a premium tequila go for? You know? Um, yeah, it, it varies. Yeah, it, it varies. I mean, we all, we sell everything at suggested retail price of the brand. I think that's a super important part of our business model because we don't want to be price gouging just because we're selling at, you know, with the buzzword NFT. Um, for us, we're trying to prove, especially to the traditional wine and spirit investor that we're adding value to your purchase that this is something sustainable that we're not looking to just make a money grab on and actually solve problems for you for the, the distant future. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's kind of one of our biggest goals. We we make sure that the brand sell at the suggested retail price and that it's something that you can get anywhere else at that price. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, before like it uh, being an investment platform of sorts and kind of the benefit mm -hmm. of being able to um, store your bottle safely, you know, uh, which is which is I think a, a really big deal. Um, yeah. Is that, is that like part of the cost? Is there a yearly cost to maintain that, uh, for the bottle owners or is yeah, so a cool, a cool, um, utilization of the blockchain for us is that all bottles sold on block bar are part of our smart contract. And what that means is that every time a bottle is sold on the secondary market, 5% of that secondary market price goes to block bar and 5% goes to the brand. Um, so it's also both a cool opportunity for the brands to have like a continued revenue from a purchase. Yeah. Um, so not just kind of selling, never seeing it again. And it also helps them invest then in, in block bar, in the NFT owners as like a, as a lifestyle ownership, because, you know, there's value in them at reselling down the line as well. And then for us, that 5% goes to the shipping, uh, 
insurance costs, storage, things like that. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. That's so, that's so great. Um, you know, you hear about the art artists getting yeah. you know, royalties over time and, and, and that's great for the artists. It's kind of changing the game for them. Um, brands also can get in on that. And I think, uh, yeah. that, like you said, it's a great way to reinvest, you know, in, in, in the consumer. Right. Yeah. In the, in the, in the- and that's, that's what they're doing, which is great. You know, on the artist standpoint, it's great because for them, it's a continued source of, of income. Um, for the brands, it's more so like a pool of investment to, like you said, reinvest back into these communities. Yeah. Um, Max, so, so, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, uh, co- upcoming drops, um, yeah. Anything? Is there anything else that that you can you can highlight? Uh, what's next on block for you know on block bar's agenda in the coming weeks, months, and and even you know if you could take the second part of my question, you know, what do you see it developing into or, or evolving in like say the next year or two years? Yeah, absolutely. So in in the near future, we we do have an exciting July. We've already had the launch with Karazawa this week, the launch with Patron, and then next week we'll be releasing the exclusive bottle with Remy Martin which is going to be super exciting in collaboration with Usher. Um, it is our first music collaboration, which is also exciting. And we're, we're really looking forward to, to just the success of, of bringing on new creative ideas. I think this leans towards more of something like that monkey shoulder board that we talked about that is like a collectible for the future and is a really cool opportunity for someone to, again, win an experience in Cognac, meet the brand, um, have this all-encompassing block bar experience that we're trying to do. Uh, when it comes to down the line, I, I think the idea, I always like to say 10 years, 20 years down the line is to be the premier marketplace for all luxury wine and spirit purchases. Um, we want, so far, the brands that we've been working with have been very adamant with of the success we've had. Every time we do have a drop, we have the opportunity to kind of break even deeper into the portfolios of these brands. Um, and slowly but surely, we want to be the marketplace that is solving these two huge problems for luxury wine and spirits and that could be even for a drinker and someone who's looking to redeem right away uh we want to be that point of contact that you can trust in an industry that you know has had its problems over the past 100 years yeah yeah um i want to take it back to what you were talking about before with usher and and uh, the the music collaboration um is is it what, what else is entailed when you have someone like usher involved is it just the fact that he's a music artist or is there something else involved there uh w- with the collaboration like i don't know music yeah. or something like that so it's it's less about the music and more so about usher's um interest in cognac mm-hmm. he has a super large cognac collection and is an advocate for the remy martin brand as a brand ambassador um and what's interesting about this drop is that it, they used ai to actually build out the taste palette for usher based off of the, his experience in tasting cognacs and what he typically buys from the brand. So this is almost like a completely custom cognac liquid that's never been done before. Yeah. Um, on top of that, the bottles are going to be signed by Usher with a unique art piece, also generated by AI on the bottle. And since there's only 25 of those editions, one of those lucky buyers is going to have the opportunity to take that all expense paid trip to cognac with the remy martin team awesome and when when is that drop again i'm sorry yeah so that is going to be next monday so right this sunday is the 24th on the 25th we announce and then it's going to drop on the uh that friday that friday okay perfect so our our listeners yeah so the 29th listeners will be able to join in uh if if they want to get that i never get i never get Stop being amazed, you know, like they use AI yeah. to kind of figure out Usher's palette. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I think uh, it, there's so many, I, I got to give it to the wine and spirit space. I feel like they were pretty stagnant over the past, again, hundred years, but over the past five years, we've seen them get really creative with technology, whether it's, you know, improving authenticity, like they're doing block bar or getting creative with experimenting on the liquid that they, that they make. Yeah which has been awesome. Um, and, and Usher's been in, you know, I don't know if you've watched any like Twitter feeds recently. Yeah. His, uh, he did like a, a mini concert NPR with the, uh, yeah. You know, um, the watch this. The watch yeah. this. Yeah. And it's just been everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We, it, it was really good timing for us. Yeah. Um, also it was an, if anyone hasn't watched the tiny desk in, in whole, it was an awesome concert and one of my favorite channels to see like an intimate experience for a lot of artists. So definitely recommend that as well. Yeah, got me back into took me back to my teenage years. I was like, man, this guy. Yeah. I mean, um, I actually yeah. saw Usher um, 
about like six months ago, I live in Brooklyn, roller skating around Brooklyn, oh, really? which was really yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that can't be Usher. And then I checked his social social media and that was it. <laughs> so fu- a funny run in for sure. <laughs> oh man, that, that's great. Um, yeah. Max, um, thank you so much for, for being on the podcast. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, what I wanted to, you know, end it all the time is, you know, how can people, um, you know, kind of follow you guys on social media, you know, kind of start learning about, yeah. you, you know, visiting your website, but what else, how, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, totally. I think the best way to keep up with everything block bar is through our social channels and newsletter. Um, I also really encourage everyone going to blockbar.com and just taking a look at the platform. I know, we, you know, the word NFT has been thrown around so much over the past 12 months, but we're really trying to use the value um, to add a benefit to a traditional kind of consumer and invest investor who's looking to invest in an alternative asset. Um, so our social media handles are great. Twitter's just at BlockBar, Instagram at BlockBar.eth. Um, and again, the newsletter every week on the BlockBar website, you can sign up where we give you updates on not only our company, but industry news and wine and spirit nfts everything involved um but yeah thank you so much for the time today this was an awesome conversation if anyone wants to learn anything more specifically we're also an open book here so feel free to email us contact at blockbar.com is our general email we'll reach back out to you directly to even just have a discussion if you're looking to learn more and specifically help on the sales side as well um so thank you so much again this was this was really great no, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Max. I hope you have, have a great uh, National Patron, uh, National Tequila Day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll be celebrating for sure when we sell that out. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> take care, Max. Uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Likewise. Thanks so much again. Block Bar is setting itself up to be the standard in the NFT marketplace for wine and spirits. Its combination of solving a problem with fake products and driving utility for NFT holders is one way to merge the physical with the digital and new technology with a practical purpose. A big thanks to Max for coming on the podcast and talking about BlockBar. And as always, a big thanks to you for listening. Until next time, take care.